This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The latest from the Russia-Ukraine crisis is that Russian troops are massing at the border, ready to invade at any moment. The Wall Street Journal reported that the troop presence was ratcheting up concerns that Moscow is preparing for another major incursion and not conducting exercises as it claims, U.S. officials said. Russia denies there's anything unusual going on, but the rhetoric in U.S. media certainly says otherwise. Obama-Putin showdown. Thousands of Russian troops are massed on the border of Ukraine. Defense officials here tell us that as of tonight, the Russians have enough military firepower in place to invade Ukraine. There's an estimated 40,000 heavily armed Russian troops positioned near the Ukraine border. NBC's Jim Miklashevsky went on to show viewers what the Russian invasion would look like and made it sound like it could happen any minute now. These claims, of course, are based on intelligence that very few people have actually seen. And some of this should sound familiar to those who remember the 1991 Gulf War. When Iraqi forces invaded Kuwait, U.S. officials, with the help of corporate media, claimed to have satellite images showing a massive Iraqi troop buildup on the border with U.S. ally Saudi Arabia. That U.S. intelligence-generated story was later debunked by the St. Petersburg Times. Official intelligence can be legitimate, or it can be fraudulent, intended to affect political aims, which is why journalists should be skeptical and report claims as claims, not facts. Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, we've been told a million times, is a straight talker. And he was talking straight when he spoke at a March 29th event for GOP megafunder Sheldon Adelson. Recalling his trip to Israel, Christie referred to the West Bank as occupied territory. That wouldn't make Adelson's group happy, but so be it. The land is under military occupation. And straight talk is straight talk, right? Well, no. Christie promptly apologized for the gaffe. More troubling than the pro-Israel political correctness imposed by the GOP event is that it was embraced by journalists. An LA Times report called Occupied Territories terminology used by Israel's critics. TV pundits, too, saw Christie's inadvertent honesty as a problem. Here's Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace. In Las Vegas, meeting with Sheldon Adelson and a number of other big Jewish contributors. And at one point, he talked about flying over the occupied territories, which implies that, uh, that Israel is occupying parts of the West Bank or Gaza. He doesn't imply, he says it. And yeah, that, right. And, 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 he had a had, and, and he had that is that not back. something that a lot of uh, Jews like. Yeah, so. Let, let and on CNN, former Obama press aide Bill Burton and host Candy Crowley had this exchange. If you look at what happened uh, in Las Vegas, where he referred to Palestine as occupied territories, I mean, that's the sort of thing that shows that he's just, he's not on top of his game like you need to be when you're a presidential candidate. Right, but he's not in a president. I mean, they're all going to make really stupid mistakes, of which that, that was one. So saying something perfectly accurate is a stupid mistake as a reporter, proving once again that, as journalist Michael Kinsley put it, a gaffe is when a politician tells some obvious truth he wasn't supposed to say. And finally, what's another word for torture? That appears to be what Washington Post reporters were asking themselves when they wrote a big scoop about the Senate Intelligence Committee investigation into the CIA's Bush-era torture program. The report finds that the CIA misled lawmakers and the public about the effectiveness of torture. But the paper wouldn't call it that. Readers got references to brutal interrogation programs, harsh techniques, excruciating interrogation methods, brutal measures, harsh interrogation techniques, coercive techniques, enhanced interrogation techniques. Of one prisoner, readers learned, CIA interrogators forcibly kept his head under the water while he struggled to breathe and beat him repeatedly, hitting him with a truncheon-like object and smashing his head against a wall. Yet the only time the Post used the T word was in a reference to methods that Obama and others later labeled torture. Yes, and there are also methods that the U.S. media would not hesitate to label torture if they were happening in another country. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.